I had a, a fabulous pediatrician when I was a little kid. And you know, first impressions are everything. And I just adored this pediatrician. And he let me play with all his instruments. And he let me, you know, listen to his heart and check his pulse. And ever since then, I've just been wanting to heal people and, and do what he did. You know, I could have gone to law school. I could have gone to become an engineer. But I feel that my interest in love of science and understanding how things work and my need to, or my desire to serve people, I think that through that, you know, we could become better people ourselves. Uh, it was a great way to combine those interests in a way that I can do something really good. We went on a tour. I got to ask the, the two students lots of questions about the school, and, and they really were positive about the experience that they had had so far. Um, they all seemed to enjoy it, which I didn't think anyone really enjoyed medical school. I was expecting them to um, tell us that we needed to be here from 5 in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. If you're not here, you're slacking off. Um, but really, they, they encourage balance. At some other schools that I visited, it was really a very cutthroat environment, or seemed like it was very cutthroat. I spoke with students who were just finishing their first year, whose responses to how was the first year was, this is the worst year of my life, I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy, I'd never do it again, it was awful. Uh, whereas when I came here, the answer to how was your first year was, you know what, it's a challenge. It, it was probably the biggest challenge of my life, but everybody went through it together. I love the fact that students um, are always helping each other and always want the other person to succeed, because I think that reflects the true nature of medicine. I thought most of our professors would be PhDs busy doing research, and they would come in and teach us the first two years and, and not really be involved actively in our learning. But really, it's been the opposite. You know, sometimes we get their home cell phone numbers, so it's just like, you know, there's, there's this atmosphere of support that you get from them, that they are here to support you and uh, to answer any questions you may have that comes up throughout your studies. Whitehall is a wonderful, high-tech uh, facility that we're very, very proud of because it's ours. Uh, our students uh, genuinely feel as though this is their home away from home. It's modern, it has everything. Uh, it has three new computer labs, it has two huge lecture halls. It's everything you need in one building and for as busy as you are, it's nice to not have to hop around to buildings. If we have lecture from 8 a.m. to noon, those videotapes are up by 2, 3 p.m. up online that you can download. Um, sometimes I download them just to my iPod and you can listen to them you know, while you're you know, driving or well, don't listen to your iPod with your headphones while driving, but through the radio. Um, or working out or whatever. One of the things I appreciated about Wright State is that they did the block system and allowed us to focus on one thing at a time and learn it really well and everything kind of comes together at the end. Um, in hindsight and in comparing notes with, with uh, friends at other medical schools who take multiple classes at a time in different subject matter areas, um, I'm very, very thankful that um, we had the system that we do. What team-based learning is, is you are in a team of five people, and you're with those same five people all year long. And you'll, the course of the year, you'll have 40 or so, probably team-based learning sessions. So they'll take the hardest things like lung cancer and give you a really challenging set of clinical cases that you have to work through with your team. You're going through a patient case, and you're, you're working through with, you know, these are the symptoms. What could it be? Here's a little more. Here's the labs now. What could that mean? What direction should we be thinking? What are some of the, you know, the zebras, the crazy things that we have to worry about? So that's the process that you go through. And by the end of it, I mean, it's, it, at times, it's, it, it's actually exhilarating because you're, you're, you feel like, you, you almost feel like you're on house or something. You know, that's what you're doing. You're coming up with these diagnoses and treatment plans. Probably the, the, the thing that I, that I like the most is being able to study with the team, being able to bounce ideas off the team. Uh, they really become a little bit of a family for you here. Students learn a lot about themselves through this process, and they learn an awful lot about how they interact with their peers. And this is important, as you can imagine, in real life. It's a benefit because when you get to the clinical years and even residency, like it or not, you're going to be working with, with different types of personalities. So the best thing about the team-based learning would be working with these different types of personalities and being able to solve one problem. 
one of the, the very attractive aspects of Wright State is the fact that we do get to get out and work in a community setting from day one. Uh, through our Intro to Clinical Medicine program, we are each matched up with a physician preceptor. We start off learning how to interview patients, learning the physical exam, and perfecting those skills before you become in the real situation in front of patients in the hospitals that you do in your third year. Now some of these patients are real, some of them are simulated, but in, in this class you're going to learn how to, for instance, use a stethoscope or to look in someone's ear or mouth, basically how to communicate with the patient. So when you get to that third year, those clinical rotations, it's going to be second nature working with the patients. Our students will experience a variety of different hospitals embedded in the community um, and that helps them, first of all, decide what kind of physician they want to be, what kind of practice experience they want in, in later life. Um, I wouldn't want to be in the same hospital for the next two years. I'm glad that I'm going to get a chance to go to different places and meet different people and, and, and be exposed to all those different things. You're seeing people that can barely provide for themselves at things like our, like our, our free clinic and you're seeing, you know, the children of professionals at, you know, our, our children's hospital, which is an, an excellent facility. So I think that's what we get, as opposed to if you're going somewhere with a university hospital, it's going to be, um, I think, a bit more of a distinct patient population that you get, and you're not really going to see all different aspects of, of who you could be dealing with. I have explored a lot of different research options. I was, so I was interested in surgery for a little while, started to get involved with that research. Then later on I was involved in some nuclear medicine research. If you want to do research, the opportunities are definitely there. The country as a whole is crying out for physician scientists. Basic scientists can, can do numerous things, come up with wonderful ideas, do great experiments and so forth. Uh, but we need the, the link to the, to the clinical scenario. And I think the, the faculty really value the quality of the, the medical students who, who are doing research. They value the creativity and the ideas that the medical students bring. They're not inhibited about going after the big question. I have actually talked to a number of students who are from places like DC and New York like me and I try to let them know that for this point in your life as a medical student, you know, it's different than anything you've ever done before. It's a different level of focus, it's a different level of intensity and I think that Dayton offers the perfect environment. I think that there's just enough entertainment for when you need a break but there's also just enough quiet for when you need to get down to business and study. So I think that Dayton is, it's kind of like a, a little heaven on earth for a medical student. I'm excited now to go into third year and work with people and, and be a compassionate physician. Not only are you going here for the academic experience, but you're going here because it makes you a better person. I think more than anything, uh, what they do is they help you to become a, a thinker. They help you to think on your own. So when you get to the third or fourth year, you're going to be able to better synthesize information on your own. Better yet, when you get to residency, when you're required to think on your own, you've been doing it all four years at Wright State, so it's going to be pretty easy to, to get back into that mold. Our students do very well on their, their board examinations. They do very well as far as getting the residencies of their choice in the subspecialties of their choice. The faculty, staff, and students um, are all very, are very eager um, and willing to meet new students, to, to welcome them into this, this big family that we have here. And I don't think that you will find that camaraderie that you get here uh, at any other medical school in the country. Wright State built a physician who was clinically competent and could stand up anywhere, but also had a little something extra, had a, a human quality to them that they could reach their patients, they could connect with their patients, they could actually heal their patients, you know, more than just prescribing medicine. They can actually affect change in a patient's life.